Vesna Vulovic was working as a flight attendant when all of a sudden she was sucked out of the plane. She fell 10,000 metres over 33,000 feet from the sky and her chances of survival were zero. Welcome to Survivor Archives. Vesna Vulovic was born on the 3rd of January 1950 in Belgrade, Serbia. Her upbringing was fairly normal. Her father was a businessman and her mother was a fitness instructor. Vesna had a love for Western music, in particular the Beatles. I mean, who doesn't? But this love drove Vesna to travel to the United Kingdom to improve her English after spending a year at university. When she arrived to the United Kingdom, she initially stayed with her parents' friends in Newbury, but eventually moved to London. In London, she met up with a friend who suggested they go to Stockholm in Sweden. When Vesna's parents discovered she was in a capital city they believed was rife with drugs and sex, they demanded she come home. This part made me laugh in understanding. Being from a Slavic background myself, when your parents tell you to come home, you go home. Vesna returned to Belgrade, but she caught the travel bug. So when she saw one of her friends dressed up in her flight attendant uniform, she thought she looked so nice and had found out she had just been to London for that day. It was then that Vesna had an epiphany and decided to become a flight attendant, reveling in the possibility of visiting so many different places. In particular, being able to visit London once a month. In 1971, at 22 years old, Vesna joined Yacht, Yugoslavia's national flag carrier and largest airline. For those of you who do not know what Yugoslavia is, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia was formed in 1918 after World War I and consisted of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. In 1945, after German, Italian and Hungarian forces wreaked havoc on Yugoslavia in World War II, it became the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia, which consisted of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia and Slovenia. They then became the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia in 1963. Living in a socialist country meant that getting a job was not the easiest of tasks. And she allegedly had a history of low blood pressure, which meant she would not pass the medical exam to become a flight attendant. So right before the assessment, she drank several cups of coffee, hoping it would keep her blood pressure high enough. It worked. Eight months into her flight attendant career, Vesna was told she would be joining the crew of Yacht Flight 367, flying from Stockholm to Belgrade with a stopover in Copenhagen. In a cruel twist of fate, Vesna realised that Yacht confused her with another attendant named Vesna. Regardless of the mix-up, she decided to join the crew because she had never been to Denmark and was excited to see it. In Denmark, Vesna wanted to go sightseeing, but all of her colleagues wanted to go shopping and sit in their hotel room, so she followed begrudgingly. Interestingly enough, the captain had locked himself in his hotel room for 24 hours, refusing to go out at all. Perhaps he had that inner sense of dread before death hit him. On January 26, 1972, at 1.30pm, flight crew 367 arrived at Copenhagen Airport and waited and watched as the passengers and the previous crew deplaned. Vesna and a couple of other crew members noticed that there was a man who seemed irate and it was suspected that he checked his bag in at Stockholm got off at Copenhagen and never reboarded the flight. New passengers boarded the plane with crew 367 and took off at 3.15 p.m. Approximately 45 minutes into the flight at 4.01 p.m., an explosion went off in DC-9's baggage compartment. The explosion caused the plane to break apart over the Czechoslovakian village of Srpska Kamenetsi. All of the other passengers and crew members were blown out of the aircraft when the cabin depressurized and died. Vesna was the only survivor out of the 28 passengers and crew members. Vesna fell 10,160 meters, 33,330 feet within a violently out of control, torn apart aircraft. Air safety investigators claim that Vesna was trapped behind a food cart in the DC-9 fuselage as it broke away from the rest of the aircraft and plummeted towards the ground. Vesna remained inside as the aircraft landed at an angle in a heavily wooded and snow-covered mountainside, cushioning the impact. 
Vesna was discovered by a villager named Bruno Honky, who heard her screaming in the wreckage. Her turquoise uniform was covered in blood and her three inch stilettos had been torn off. God must have been watching over Vesna because Bruno Honky was actually a medic during World War II and was able to keep her alive until rescuers arrived. In an ironic twist of fate, it was reported by physicians that Vesna's low blood pressure, the same one she was trying to hide, caused her to pass out quickly after the cabin depressurized and kept her heart from bursting on impact. Vesna spent days in a coma. She had a fractured skull, two broken legs and three broken vertebrae, one of which was crushed completely. Her pelvis was fractured and she had several broken ribs. Vesna was temporarily paralyzed below the waist, which is a miracle in itself. By the grace of God, Vesna had total amnesia and did not remember anything from an hour before the crash. I cannot imagine the trauma she would have suffered had she remembered so soon after the event. In fact, Vesna learned of what happened two weeks later when her doctor had shown her the newspaper headline. She fainted from shock and had to be sedated. One month after the crash, Vesna came to, and the last thing she remembered was greeting passages from the flight and then nothing until she saw her parents in the hospital room. The first thing she asked for when she awoke was a cigarette, which is hilarious and very Slavic. She proceeded to query why her parents were in Slovenia, having no idea that she was in the hospital. Vesna's hospital room in Belgrade was placed under 24 hour police protection, fearing the perpetrators of the bombing would try to kill her. Between 1962 and 1982, Croatian nationalists carried out 128 terror attacks against Yugoslavian citizens and military targets. On the same day of the plane crash, a bomb exploded on a train traveling from Vienna to Zagreb, injuring six people. One of the leaders of this terrorist organization claimed responsibility for the bombing of Flight 367. However, in 2009, an investigation by two reporters in Prague concluded that the DC-9 was actually mistakenly shot down by the Czechoslovakian Air Force at only an 800 meter height. However, this claim was muddled with political funny business and unsubstantiated. Regardless, no one was ever arrested. So back to Vesna, her hospitalization lasted until June 1972, almost six months. She underwent several operations to try to restore her movement and in typical survivor fashion, within less than a year, she was able to walk again, albeit with a limp. Vesna explains, I was broken and the doctors put me back together again. Vesna was honored by Josip Tito, Yugoslavia's communist leader as a national hero. She had a song named after her and entered into the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest recorded fall without a parachute. My favorite, Vesna received recognition at a London gala from none other than Paul McCartney. Talk about full circle. She amazingly returned back to work later that same year. However, the airline was hesitant to give her her old job back as a flight attendant because of the publicity it would bring regarding the accident. So Yugoslav Airlines delegated her to an office job. The fact that Vesna wanted to be a flight attendant again is something else. Vesna refused any therapy for the survivor's guilt she felt and instead became a devout Orthodox Christian, leaning on her faith for healing. Vesna's parents both died within a few years of the crash. She got married and divorced and was unable to have children due to her injuries. Vesna was active in the political sphere and due to this activity, she was forced to retire 18 years later from Yugoslav Airlines. Vesna surely did not have an easy life post the crash and retreated into solitude, only accepting a few interviews and declining numerous ones, most notably Oprah and BBC. She explained that she was tired of talking about the fall. Her demeanor had changed over the tough years and she regretted ever boarding Flight 367, claiming the incident not only ruined her life, but also her parents. In December 2016, friends became concerned for Vesna as she was not answering their calls. And on the 23rd of December, locksmiths broke into her apartment and discovered her body. Vesna Vulovic, 
died of heart-related issues at the age of 66 years old and is buried in Belgrade's new cemetery. As sad as this is, I choose to remember Vesna Vulovic as the young optimist that survived a horrible ordeal and said, if you can survive what I survived, you can survive anything. Thanks for watching. If you would like to hear more survival stories, please like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you're on Facebook, please like, comment and follow.